Hi there everybody, it's Halsey from Slim and Stylish and I'd like to thank you for joining me today. I'm a UK Stamping Up independent demonstrator and today I've got a Valentine's themed box for you. It's this gorgeous little treat box and inside it is enough room for a cupcake. There's not a cupcake in it because I am a bad cook. <laughs> I would burn it and it would be lumpy and bad but a cupcake holder does fit in it and it's got the circle so that when you put it in that's not going to knock or fall around so that your icing doesn't get on the box and I'm hoping if I leave this on the side long enough my brother who is a fantastic baker chef he, he loves the kitchen he might put a little cake in it for me that would be quite nice. But it's used in Melon Mambo and the Painted with Love designer series paper. It's got three parts to it, so it is a slightly longer tutorial, but I'm going to rush through it. Because I'm rushing, well not rushing, but because I'm not going as slowly as perhaps I could, because I don't want you to sit here for an hour or so, um, it will be all detailed on my blog step by step, so do pop over and have a look. The description for this will be in the description bar below, um, and go and have a look at it. So let's get started. I've used Melon Mambo and the Painter We Love DSP. You could use anything because it doesn't have to be a Valentine's project. You could do this for a birthday if you wanted to. The main piece of DSP with the Melon Mambo is six and seven eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths of an inch. You then need a smaller square. I was going to say tiny square, but it's not really tiny. It is four and thirteen sixteenths of an inch by four and thirteen sixteenths of an inch. But both of those together uses, if you put them together like that, an A4 sheet of paper really. There's a strip on the end, this end, but so you can get that from one piece. And then the DSP is five and fifteen eighths of an inch. No, five and fifteen sixteenths of an inch by five and sixteen in Five and fifteen sixteenths. I am terrible. The squared. All the way around. My fractions are appalling. So those are the three sheets you need and you're going to need your scoreboard. And I'll talk you through what we're doing. So starting with your bigger piece. Okay. And there's my little scoring tool. You want to do this at two inches round. Keep turning and doing it at two inches. Because this is card, you are much better to use the thicker part of your scoring tool than your thin part and push quite hard and it will, will make quite a nice imprint then and quite smooth. DSP you don't need to push as hard for, but for that you do. So I'm going to do the base first and then I'll do all the bits separately. It's probably a bit backwards, but it's the way my mind works. So you just want to score around that. I don't use Melon Mambo that on, often. I like Berry Burst because it's a deeper sort of shade. So it's still pink, but it's got that deep berryness, whereas Melon Mambo is just a little bit highlighter pink for me, but it works for, for Valentine's, really. Okay, you just want to cut up, once you've burnished it, to create your tabs. I know I've said this before, and I don't know what the proper name is, but I call it the windmill cut. So that once you've done this tab, you turn it, and you do this tab. I don't know what the proper name is. It might be a windmill cut. It'd be quite clever of me if it is a windmill cut. I wonder if I can copyright it. <laughs> the reason I call it the windmill cut is because when you fold it over, it's going to start to look like one of those windmills you have in your garden because you'll only have one tab folding into each piece. So keep turning it clockwise. I'm going to tab in on both sides. So you're tabbing along the score side. So that's straight and that's tabbed. And then you just want to tab in on the end as well. It's quite a sturdy little box this with the DSP isn't thin because it's got the foil in that's quite thick and quite sturdy and then you've got all the pieces of card in it it's quite a sturdy little box if you if you weren't a good chef like my like I'm not a very good one and you make a lumpy heavy cake it would fit in it so then you just want to bring it all around like that to close it okay so I'm just going to use fast fuse very upsetting news about the fast fuse in my opinion 
um, the fast fuse is going to be retired at the end of the Stampin' Up! sort of year before the new annual catalogue's released. And I think that's really sad. You've still got a couple of months to buy it while stocks last. But I love fast fuse. I use it in everything. If you're regular to my channel, you'll know it's it's a good one. And I'm, I'm very upset about it. So I've done a bit of a, a bulk buy stock up on it. If you like it, do the same. Or I'd recommend doing the same. All the links for it are on my website if you want to purchase it before it goes. Or at least get your refills. So there's my box. Because I wasn't quite neat with my tabs, I've just got these, I don't know whether you can see, just a little bit on the edge. So I'm just going to come along with my scissors and just chop those off. And there's my box, which will fit in perfectly. A ceiling case, but as you can see, that, that does waddle. So that's why I made the inserts. So for the insert, you need the smaller piece of melon mumbo and your score board again. Okay. And what you want to do for this one, where's my little thing? is you want to come round and you want to do this at half an inch all the way around. Sorry, half an inch and one inch all the way around. That sounds about right. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever do that? When you, whenever you make something, you've played with so many measurements in your head that when you come to make it properly, you can never remember which one of the measurements you used. <laughs> Or I can't, so it's one and a half, so it's half and one of an inch. And then just fold that in. Both of them being folded in in the same direction. I just want to make it quite sturdy. And this is where the fun starts because you need to punch the circle out. If you've got circle framelits, that's great. Circle framelits would be ideal and you want a two and a quarter inch one. I don't. I have the punch and it's a little bit fiddly because it is quite tough. So what you want to do, because the punch doesn't go through to the centre, I'll show you the punch doesn't go through to the centre, you see. So if you just fold that in. And like that. The punch will then go over the top of it and go to the centre. But because you want to get it in the middle, which I know is a bit difficult to sort of judge, that's the middle. You can see I've got three pieces there, so it's going to be really tough to get my punch through the three. So turn it over. go for it <laughs> muscles and then that puts a circle in the middle but like I said it is a bit tough and this it doesn't matter because that's just going to fold over and no one will see it keep that for the for later keep the scraps so once you've done that all you need to do is chop the three little squares on the outside off and keep the little square in the middle. So you want it like that. And then you just want to tab into that bit again and you want to do your windmill thing again. So remember which side you've done and do the same over here being lazy there I'm doing the tab and the cut at the same time because like I said it's a bit of a long video I was a bit worried about it actually I try and keep all my videos to about 15 minutes so I tried looked at the box and thought well what bits can I skip and then I thought no because I like the box I'll just do a longer tutorial because I love this part in the middle I think it's it's great and for anyone who's who's travelling to give anybody their cupcake. It's a super idea because, you know, 
in the car, it's going to sit straight. I'll tell you a story. I once did bake a cake for Valentine's Day. And like I said, I, I'm not good. I had some help from my brother. And um, we got this gorgeous cake going and it was lovely. And I decorated it with lemon icing. And I cut it into the shape of a heart. So I did that thing with the paper where you fold it in half. You make it into a heart cut all around it. And I was quite chuffed with it. Sorry, just a button. Tab this bit here. And after it finished, it looked quite nice. And the little bit of the sponge that I tried tasted really nice as well. So I was quite happy with my, uh, my efforts. I put it in the cake tin. Walked out to the car to go out on my date. And um, tripped over. <laughs> the cake just completely crumbled and smashed. The icing went everywhere. It looked atrocious. And when I turned up, I said to my boyfriend, oh, I made you a cake. Don't laugh. And he opened it and he went, oh, well, you tried. And I thought, well, I did. <laughs> but I fell over in the process. It's, that's just a typical, typical me. Even when I do something nice, I can't, can't get it right. <laughs> so there we go. Put your fuse on all your little tabs and just start folding those over. Probably because I was wearing silly shoes. I always wear silly shoes. I buy these gorgeous ones with huge heels and think I can walk in them and I can't. So with this, you just want to put your fast fuse along the edge as well. The reason I'm using fast fuse for this, Tombow would be easier to get in. But if it goes to anybody who is putting a cake in here, I don't really want liquid, liquid glue all around it. That's a bit strange, isn't it, for food? I suppose it'll be dry by then, but I'm not sure. Oh, I know what would be handy here. Let's fold that over. Silicon mat to the rescue. It's possibly a bit easier to do it. A few little bits like that. This is just to make it it really sturdy so that it doesn't fall down when it's in your box. I'll glue that down too. So that then just fits in. Which your box is quite tight but you obviously want it to be. And push that all the way down to the bottom. And then you can just put your, your cupcake in there. Love that part of the box. It's such a good design to it. So the lid, you want your DSP. It was cut at 5 and 15 sixteenths of an inch by 5 and 15 sixteenths of an inch. So what you want to do is you want to score... I want this to be the top, so you want to score on this side so it folds in at three quarters of an inch and at one and a half inches on each side. And because this is DSP, I've gone back to using the thinner side and I'm not pushing as hard. One and a half and three quarters. Okay, once you've done that, that is the final end of the scoring tool, so you can put it down. I'm going to come along and just burnish all your sides. And you really do need to do this with the bone folder. Your fingers won't be enough because this foil paper is really thick, especially if you're on if you've got the gold bit going into the the fold. Because this is going to be a double fold back for strength, you want to again do it where you've got, I think you sit better on that side, you've got your four squares. You want to take these three off and just leave the inside one. And you want to tab it like a windmill again.
so it's like that. I'll do that on each side. Oh, I haven't done it like a windmill there. I'll do it this way. Almost caught myself just in time, otherwise I'd be missing a tab. <laughs> I'm so used to having two tabs on the same bit that I get confused. Doing it again. I'm not the smartest when it comes to tabs. I do have to sit and think. And I made a bag earlier with no tabs at all and expected it to be able to stick together. And obviously that didn't work. <laughs> so <laughs> I was trying to make a bag for this box actually. That might come on one of the days. I'm going to do a card to match it as well. The card's a little bit simpler than the bag because the bag needs to be both thick and wide. It's It was a bit tricky. I made it and the box didn't fit in it, put it that way. <laughs> so I wasn't doing well. So there we go, you've got all your tabs in your windmill effect again. So now what I did is I grabbed the washi tape from the Tutti Frutti Sweets, quite like this, and it's in rich razzle berries, so it just breaks up the melon mumbo a bit because it's a bit deeper. And this paper has got sort of a natural line across it, so you just want to run it across the middle natural line, straight. that under okay so on your box it just gives it a, a bit of texture underneath you then want your whisper white organizer ribbon I'm not going to color it today I feel like I've colored it enough recently I do like it colored but I'm just going to leave it white to break up the the pinks and the fast fuse so just fast fuse a long way you put your washi Stick your organiser ribbon. In there, bring it round. That's sort of the centre, so I'm just going to give myself a bit of, probably, let's measure it so you, you've got an idea of how much I'm probably giving it. Probably about 10 inches um, from the centre. So you've got a nice long piece. Let's do that again the other side. You do need the length because I am double bowing it at the other side. So again to the center and again about 10 inches. Let's make that a bit easier. If you're doing the whole thing, cut about 15 inches off and that will work rather than saying 10 inches from the center. So once you've done that and it's all stuck so that these come over, you now want to turn it and put your fast fuse onto each of these flaps. Like that. Put your flap in, bring it together and push that down. Flap in, bring it together, and push that down. And just do that all the way along. So you've got your lid. on your box it's quite it's not a tight tight fit where it's silly but it is a tight fit so that your lid doesn't come off make sure your organizer ribbon is quite straight which it is okay once you've done that you need some glue dots and you just want to put the glue dots in the center so I'm going to use two one there if it hadn't stuck to my finger. Get off, get off, get off. Oh, waste of a glue dot. My fingers are quite tacky from the um, 
fast fuse, I think that's what it is. So let's just cut my nails off so I can't really hold it. Oh, come on. Right, one more try and then I'm using fast fuse. Oh, they listened, they listened. So I've put two kind of next to each other in the centre of the box. Like that, I don't know if you can see. And then I'm bringing in the gold sequin trim. I love this, especially with this paper because it's obviously got the gold in. I think that's going to be my top that's got the gold in there. So I'm going to go this way around. And I'm just going to pop that on. And sort of about there where it's just hanging down. So it just kind of touches the floor. You want to stick four of these down. And sort of two go into the one side. These glue dots are not my friend today, are they? Really not. Okay. So there we go. Four. And then I'm just going to pop another couple of glue dots, and they're going to be my friend this time. One on top there. Oh, come on. There we go. And one on top here. So it helps stick the organizer ribbon to the sequins. Come on. There we go. Let's bring the organizer ribbon over and tie it in a nice knot. And just push the knot down onto where the sequins are into a bow. Okay, and what you want to do with the bow is you're going to be bringing these bits around. So you want to look and make sure that they all match in size. So I want that one to be a bit bigger. Just going to feed that underneath so it makes my bow sort of straight. Okay, another glue dot. I'm sorry, my head has just hit the camera. I was trying to look over the top. So another glue dot. Stick that down. And then stick that one down. Okay, that doesn't look the neatest, but it's not going to worry at all because you're putting the little sentiment on top. Okay, so there's my bow. Now this filler sentiment, I'm using a good day stamp set and I'm using this one, a little treat for someone sweet. And I gold heat emboss this onto the card. So my embossing buddy. Now, if you've got me on sound, turn me down because I'm just going to come in with my heating tool and just emboss that properly. Give me a second.
okay well, once you've done that I'm just bringing in my blender pen my melon mambo ink just push the top down onto the bottom so you get a little bit of residue pop it into your blender pen just color in the tip of your ice cream Coming in with my Winker Stella just to give it a bit of gold glitz. And then I've got two punches, so I'm using my one and a half inch circle punch and my one and three eighths inch scallop punch. So for the circle punch, I'm just going to use that circle we had earlier, pop it into the punch. And these I'm keeping because you never know when these are quite handy in a card just as a, a hint and tip. I'm not using it for this project, but there'll probably be one soon. And then I'm just punching that up. Grab your dimensionals. And you want to put one in there like that. And the reason I've got my scissors quite precariously, like I'm going to take my eye out, is because you want to cut two dimensionals in half. And then what you're doing with those is you just want to grab both halves, fold them and stick them together. I'm all fingers and thumbs today, aren't I? I don't feel like I'm doing well. So once you've stuck them together, pull the backings off. And you just want to stick it to the top of your bow just there. So you've got a nice big fat dimensional. And you want to do exactly the same with this one. Stick it down. Pull the backings off. That's as simple as the first one should have been. I just made it really complicated, didn't I? Silly me. Spread these two along so that you go in the middle and just put that on again. And all you need to do is just stick that on top. And there are your boxes. How cute are they? With the little cupcake bit in the middle. I'm sorry it's been a long tutorial, but I hope it was worth it. I will detail everything on my blog. Thank you for joining me. I will do a card that matches it and a bag once I've worked out the bag and I'll put the, bring them all to you this week for Valentine's. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye.